Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts, it's Scooby Doo Tuesday guys, you know what that means, of course it means we're here continuing the journey of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. This is Season 2, Episode 3 of the show, The Night the Clown Cried 2, Tears of Doom. So the Cry Baby Clown, I believe that's the character's name, the Cry Baby Clown, Mark Hamill voicing, is back apparently based off that title, and we had to have a subtitle, Tears of Doom. So, this is interesting, because in the Season 2 premiere, we got introduced to this character, which is a weird character, but regardless... The gang, even though it wasn't the full uh, Mystery Inc., because Daphne, of course, didn't want to come back and solve mysteries, was really upset with Fred, so she didn't want nothing to do with them trying to get the band back together, get Mystery Inc. back together, they actually failed. And partly due to Fred's trap and how he had it all figured out, Daphne wasn't there to be a part of that trap, this over-the-top ridiculous trap, so they failed at capturing the villain of the week, which has never happened in regards to when we introduce one then we actually catch them. Now, the one thing I think in terms of season one was the freak, even though they didn't actually run into the freak until the season one finale, even though we saw the freak in the episode previously, but still, that's the one instance, but they actually failed in the season two premiere. So last week's episode, we had Hot Dog Water, aka Linda Cardellini, aka live action Velma, who we got to see within season one, join the gang and actually solve the mystery. So that was pretty interesting to kind of hear the two Velmas talking back and forth. That was kind of bizarre. But uh, you guys are saying this is a big episode for the show, so I can't wait to dive in, especially with Crybaby Clown in the mix, the one they actually failed to capture. So I'm curious to see what happens here. So let's get into now, guys. Let's check it out. Season 2, Episode 3 of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Let's go. I have about, oh, let's see, 42 pages on traps here in my notes. Traps, traps, Daphne, Daphne. Traps, traps, traps. Daphne, Daphne, Daphne. I was never attentive or romantic enough. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means. I mean, you just weren't being honest with your feelings, oh, it seems. I'm so sad. Can you help me? I'm so I'm sad. Like <laughs> therapy. I think I've had a breakthrough. Too late. Damn. What? Ooh. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait. I don't try to pause during TV reactions, but oh, what? <laughs> Okay, that was interesting. I didn't expect her in the intro, but I guess it makes sense. Daphne's not a part of the team right now, so... She's in the shot there. Okay. <laughs> what the hell? I did this for you. It's what you've always wanted, right? I can't believe you actually did that. Wait, you think this one works, Scoob? Oh, is that it, a wig? Frederick? Huh? Huh? Isn't Dr. Henkel Fuss your therapist? Doesn't anyone care about mystery solving anymore? I care. You still got me. Oh. It's so cool. But baby doll, you can't cut it off. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hot. Whoa. Mom always said, okay. Hot as is, as hot as stones. Oh, shit. They're coming back for Fred. Why? Who? I'm not Angel Dynamite, Ricky. I'm Cassidy Williams. Yes. And I won't do it. Yes. I won't hurt those kids again. The naive Cassidy I once fell in love with. You willing to bet the... Oh, shit. <laughs> we can't do a thing with my hair. Right? <laughs> what is he doing? I'm so confused of what this... Okay. Mayor Nettles hired him a few weeks ago. Get pictures of all the destruction. See if you can get this teddy bear in the picture. I don't like my citizens being abducted by evil clown man babies. I don't think I anybody does. Mystery solved. If I can help in no way, Angel Cassidy oh. Dynamite Williams, whatever your name is. Yeah, they walk through just in the right time. Oh boy. Daphne. I don't think that works at all. Oh it's boy. stupid. Fred, you're an idiot. Yeah, try Fred. this one, Daphne. Well, if you're looking for something new, Daph, try this. It's the same thing. Oh my god. Yeah, I think we should get them all. Oh, baby. It's the same I thing. Exactly I don't think there's any difference in those. Huh? What? Hey, man, someone really oh. did a number on this plastic surgeon's office. Evil clown, baby man. <laughs> baby man. Oh. Which should lead well, us right take... to baby clown. I mean, they think I that. Did. And give him to Daphne as a present to show her how much I care. Fred Jones, you are the most incompetent. Oh shit! Microbrain guy named Fred in the Daphne, you have a transmitter just under the skin 
around your ankle. What? What? Tagged with a tracking device? Ooh. He's so perfect. Funny how the city's publicist J.R. Kipple shows up a few minutes after Crybaby Clown disappears. Oh, Daphne, I was so worried. I've been looking all over for you. Daphne and I are leaving for Hollywood tonight. He's still frozen. Oh shit. Oh, he knew they were out Mr. there. Cow, right <laughs> behind you. The four didn't even know each other. There's no connection. Yeah. We're just spinning our wheels. I think I know who the Crybaby Clown is. Don't I think go. I know. The fuck? Okay. But I have you, and I'm taking you all. I'm back pretty sure I know who this is. Clown. <laughs> oh Jesus! That's a giant plane, by the way. <laughs> I'm the only one professionally trained as a pilot and barnstormer, so you Wait, what? two are on ground control. This is crazy. Okay, this is insane. Of course. Nobody's in here. Wow. This episode just went crazy at the end here. Jesus. He's got Daphne back here. Daphne, go. That was a cool shot. To the gang? Really? Yeah. I'd like that. Scooby Dooby. Hot dog water. I'm a hot dog water. Damn, they just did it there. I'm not sure what happened in the third act, but holy crap, for some reason they decided we have to really elevate and take this over the top in the third act, closing out this two part arc with the Crybaby Clown. Because we literally had Fred flying that gigantic plane and skimming across the water several times and dropping down and all this kind of stuff and going crazy flying this damn plane around and th that's 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 after he first of all they're driving up the mystery scene on the the runway with the plane and then him jumping on like one of the wheels at the front wheels and then holding on as it gets lifted in as they're flying in the air i'm like what in the fuck and he's just going crazy flying this whole thing around it's because Daphne's on board, right? And he's just like, Daphne! And then everything just got crazy. And he was just like, oh my. I was like, what is happening right now? Like, is this Scooby-Doo? <laughs> like, it, the last time I got like this, like, what in the hell is happening? Was when he had those two wizards fighting in season one. Because it went from, this went from a Scooby-Doo episode to now this is something else. Like, it really elevated past that point. Because this was just so over the top. But it was damn pretty exciting. Because this is a villain that we've that we failed to capture in the first episode of the season new premiere when he first appeared. And now the crybaby clown is back. And now we got to go over the top and it finished in a, in a big way. I didn't put it together, but I maybe should have, but it just didn't really piece together until the third act of this episode that Baylor Hotner, the parody of Taylor Lautner is crybaby clown. And I like the fact that we actually had two different voice actors. We had Mark Hamill, of course, did a phenomenal job uh, again <laughs> over the top of this character, channeling the Joker a little bit in crybaby clown, but he, he voiced course, uh, I can't even talk today. It's a fucking Monday morning. He voiced crybaby clown, but it was Baylor Lautner. The character was voiced by Matt Lanter, of course, uh, Anakin Skywalker from the clone Wars, star Wars series. And I think rebels as well. And then a couple other things, but Anyways, Matt Lancher, so there, there was a distinct difference in the voices, so it was kind of hard to piece together. But see, he appeared in all three episodes, but he took a little bit of a breather. But it was all for uh, studying for a role in, in the title of the episode, which was 
the night the clown, the clown, see, I can't even talk, the night the clown cried, and that's what the role he was researching for. So we had all that, and we had hot dog water in the intro of the episode, which was crazy. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. <laughs> She's in the intro here, going the characters back and forth, and then, the, then at the final shot there at the end. And they ended this episode on a weird note with her character, because they had... Daphne there uh, slapping, you know, Baylor Hotner in the face for what for what he did and putting a tracking device at Daphne. I'm like, what the fuck? And so then she's like, okay, I'll come back. I'll come back, right? I'll come back. And, um, but then Hot Dog Water's standing there and just kind of like, and then that was it. They got, they got the block. Like, well, okay, so, like, is it going to, is, is it going to be to where, Daphne's back in the mix, but Hot Dog Water's still on the team in the next episode. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm confused on this because I'm like, is even though, okay, th I'm cool that they're reuniting because Daphne realized, oh my God, I was with a crazy guy because listen, she was kidnapped too because, because Baylor, it's, it was, it's Baylor Hotner. See, I, this fucking name. It's, I'm used to Taylor Lautner hearing that, that name all the damn time. But anyways, so Crybaby Clown, you know, Baylor, he kidnapped a therapist fred's therapist when you know he wanted to finally talk about daphne and the timer was up but he kept talking about traps and then he's like okay i'm gonna use a word association trap daphne trap trap daphne daphne and then he gets kidnapped right after fred leaves the building like like right away so he gets kidnapped a a hair um a hairdresser whatever was cutting cassidy's hair which she said, I'm no longer Angel Dynamite because she told this to Mr. E when she went to go look at herself in like a back room or whatever with like a three arc or whatever, three mirror thing, whatever. But she cut her hair. So it looks, she looks completely different because that, that big fro really was a distinct look for her character. But also she was playing a role that like she was pretending to be somebody else. But Mr. E confronts her and says a couple of interesting things. Um, so Mr. E says that they're coming for Fred. And she's like, what? Why would they do that? Like something along the lines of that. And I was thinking about it for the rest of the episode and a little bit here getting ready for this review. And I think he might be referring to Fred's parents. I think that's what I, I don't know. That's my guess. But then Mr. E says something else about Cassidy because she says, I'm no longer Angel Dynamite. I'm Cassidy. I'm Cassidy Williams. He says, oh, the woman I fell in love with. And it's like, oh, okay. Like I, interesting. Cause see in our mystery, Inc., we had Shaggy and Velma. I don't know about falling in love, maybe, but they were kind of a thing. And in their Mr. Inc., he was the Shaggy, Mr. E was, and she was the Velma kind of of the group. And then next up, the plastic surgeon was kidnapped. Now, we actually don't get to see this, but I was wondering, were they planning on showing this? Because we only see the plastic surgeon a couple of small times in the episode. It really wasn't important in regards to the hairdresser who Cassidy was seeing to get her hair cut. And then the therapist that Fred was seeing. And then, of course, a little after this, then it was the um, journalist. Well, they said journalist. He was basically like a parody of TMZ with all the photographers and whatever, getting pictures of everything. But I guess the plastic surgeon wasn't really that important overall to the story. Or maybe they had plans to show more of this character. Regardless, they just don't show... The plastic surgeon being kidnapped we see the aftermath and then uh and then having shaggy was at fred shaggy's mom saying oh i'm just gonna get a pamphlet like okay sure you're just getting a, a pamphlet um and then of course we see the journalist the guy who was hired a couple weeks ago to i guess cover news for crystal cove by the mayor was kidnapped as well and then once Daphne was shown on the plane being kidnapped, I'm like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is Baylor Hotner or whatever. This is like, it's, it's the same person. Like, cause I just didn't think about it. I'm like, who's it going to be revealed? Cause I'm thinking when I saw the title, when we were getting the intro film and everything, and I saw the title and the characters returning the crybaby clown, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to, we're going to meet the person who actually is the character because they, the, the, because it was definitely planned differently within the first episode of the season two premiere because he wasn't captured so we'll probably actually meet the actual character that is the crybaby clown. Turns out we actually did meet him in the first episode. And then he's been in all three episodes so far. So I guess uh, his Dusk um, films are done, I guess. <laughs> Since he's been arrested, I have no idea in what how much trouble. That's the thing. They really don't tell you how much trouble a lot of these characters are in. They really don't. So who's to say? But uh, that was a crazy sequence with the whole plane stuff. That was just really over the top. I love that sequence too where he opens the door of the crime of a clown and there's uh, 
<laughs> they're Shaggy and Scooby flying the plane, or they're just sitting there in their like a pilot uniforms. That was a funny moment. I really enjoyed that. Um, and like I was mentioning earlier, like at the end, this seems like the gang's back together. But what about Hot Dog Water? Like I feel bad for her because she was a part of the gang. They were doing pretty well. I also noticed too something as well. She's holding a picture of Velma in the intro, and she actually scoots closer to Velma on the couch at one point. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. So, I think I think I know what they're implying with that. I think clearly she likes Velma, right? Um, the other scene that I didn't want to talk about briefly, it's, 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 a, it's a small little thing with Fred. Besides, well, two things. Number one, Fred having this epiphany going, I know what I need to do. And he uses a crane. I should have mentioned this a lot earlier in the review. He uses a crane to carry Daphne's bed out to the beach to have a romantic meal, a romantic picnic or whatever at the beach. <laughs> he just picks up her whole bed with a crane. How does she not wake up with the amount of noise that had to have made? How did he get the bed out of the house? I have a lot of questions. How did nobody question this or hear this until she woke up? I don't understand. <laughs> I, really, I, would, I wish they would answer how the fuck did Fred pull this off? That that was really bizarre over the time. I, I, I think Daphne would have loved it if she wasn't with Baylor and didn't and wasn't upset with Fred because he called off their engagement, wedding, whatever the fuck. Because that still that whole thing is still confusing. I feel like she would have probably found it romantic in, in a weird way because of how just smitten she was with him for a long time. But this is so fucking over the top. <laughs> the second thing is that Fred froze. He froze and fell over and was just I'm like Okay, the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Why is he frozen? And then he comes out of it. He's like, time to do a trap. So, um, so yeah, this was a crazy episode in regards to the plane stuff and Fred flying it, going all over the, it just really over the top. But it really was an interesting, you know, really intense way to conclude this episode, to conclude this arc, if you will, with Baylor Hotner, who was behind all this stuff, you know. And, um, and interesting how we he was still around we saw a little bit of him in episode two but yet took a little bit of a break we had a the, the i forget what the witch or whatever we're dealing with apparently is a real ghost story or whatever that they brought in but um the fact that he's like i'll take a break even though he's researching a role i'll take a break it's fine because he's just waiting it out just waiting it out so uh yeah we'll see what happens here um now with daphne back in the fold um I'm, i don't think that means that immediately daphne and fred are going to be get, get back together but who knows and I, I hope they answer hot dog water, the whole thing about hot dog water. Like, what, what's going on with that? So I'm curious about all that. But I hope you guys know the reaction. This was a crazy episode for sure. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for supporting the reaction, supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.